everybody keeps talking about happiness and this and that. It's like, screw happiness. Who cares? You know, like happiness is important, cool, but it's, it's an ephemeral feeling. But if you reach fulfillment in life, that checks, all, all, that checks off all the boxes, including happiness. Welcome to the Spartan Decca series on Spartan Up with Jared Cogswell, Director of Sport, and Yancy Culp, Director of Programming. What's up, Spartans? Welcome to the DECA series on the Spartan Up podcast. I'm your co-host, Jared Cogswell, along with my brother, Yancey Colt. And today, we have a special guest. We're gonna be talking about the roadmap to fulfillment with professional skier and base jumper, super Frenchie, Matthias Giroux. Today's episode of Spartan Up is brought to you by BetterHelp. Spartan Up listeners can save 10% on their first month by going to betterhelp.com slash Spartan. Guys, we've got episode two with super Frenchie, Matthias Giroux. Thank you. It's, uh, no, it's, 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 it's really, thank you for having me. Like, I love being able to, to share these experiences because the part you don't see when you see a video, of, you know, jumping off a cliff and all that is the whole, the, everything that was, that led to that experience, you know, the mental struggle, the physical struggle, the immersion, the, the, the connectivity emotionally and mentally with your surrounding, the teamwork and all this stuff. And all this stuff in the end is, is probably almost more important than the jump itself because this is what connects the whole um, experience. You know, it makes it a whole journey through the mountains. You're mounting, you're skiing steep lines, you're jumping off. It's not just the jump, it's the whole thing, you know. And that's, that's what I love about the mountains, because when you come back from a, a real day in the mountains, you totally reach the, I think, the highest level of, of, um, that people can experience in life, which is fulfillment. Everybody keeps talking about happiness and this and that. It's like, screw happiness. Who cares? You know, like happiness is important, cool, but it's, it's an ephemeral feeling. But if you reach fulfillment in life, that checks all, all that checks up all the boxes, including happiness. You know, it's 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 a whole it's the whole journey, and and fulfillment is the best thing you can wish to anybody, and happiness is just an element of that. The second you start to to chase happiness, you lost it. You're never gonna find it. It's like love. You can't force it. It happens or it doesn't. But in the end, are you fulfilled? Yeah, you know, you reminded me. Matthias, about maximizing your passion, not just finding your passion, but maximizing it. And, and I, and while I'm listening to you, I'm wondering, I'm like, man, what if Matthias didn't find skiing or what if he didn't, you know, go to that next level and, and love uh, jumping off of things. And, and, you know, what there's, you have a lot of awesome stories of your childhood, but it's also like, you know, those great musical bands, you and I like a lot of the simmer music. And I always think about like the, the, the guys that you hang around the deaf tones. Right. And I'm like, what if those guys never met each other? Right. You know? And, <laughs> yeah. and it, and it's the same thing. And, and, and I think it goes with what you're talking about with that fulfillment. You know, you're, you're maximizing your passion, you know, your purpose, you know, your why behind it. I, and I, again, we work in the fitness industry with a lot of people that are trying to maximize their physical, their mental, their emotional health. And then what we're trying to do is nudge people to overcome their fears, um, help them um, alleviate their depression, um, alleviate their, their, or, or increase their confidence versus uh, facing, you know, depression and, and low self-esteem. Um, what, are the, what are the lessons that you can share with people to, you know, and, and Yancey usually asks this question quite a bit with our guests, but what can you do or what would you say to those people that aren't maximizing who they are? Well, I think a lot of it is, is mental blockage. And as you mentioned, probably a lot of fear. And I think in the end is understand your fear because understanding your fear is understanding yourself. Once you've understood yourself, you can prioritize what matters in your existence or not. You know, there's no meaning to existence, but what is the meaning to your existence? How are you making your existence count? That's, that's my approach. Some people might completely disagree, but I think it's, 
understand yourself because if you if you feel lost it means that you haven't done really any introspection and if you just live you know if you live on the surface and you're just <laughs> just happy with this you know superficial element of your existence well you <laughs> you ain't living man you know you're not you're not accumulating to anything substantial and you're going to be on your deathbed and you're going to look back at everything that not everything you've done but everything you've missed and that's the worst thing you can do. I remember that day very clearly. I was 27 years old and I hadn't accomplished, you know, Mont Blanc and, I, and Matterhorn and all this stuff. And I think I had done the Matterhorn actually already. But anyway, um, I hadn't achieved, you know, some of my bigger, bigger goals. And I remember I was driving, I think it was in Salt Lake City, Utah. And I was driving around my car and all of a sudden it just hit me. I see this big truck driving by. And it's like, whoa, you know, whoa, you feel the whole burble, the truck shakes your whole little car. And you're just like, whoa, it's like, whoa, whoa, what if this thing ran into me? And what if, oh, wow, you know, you could totally, you know, that would have been death right there, you know, if I, you know, swerved or changed lanes or whatever. But then I remember it's the first time I realized that I'm completely okay if I die right now because I already checked off the boxes in my life at 27 years old. And sure, as you check off the boxes, you add boxes and goals to your list, right? You have, once you reach your dreams, you come up with new dreams. But I was already okay with my place in existence and my you know, acceptance of life because I was 27 years old and I already, done, I already did it right. And, and that's, that's kind of, uh, that's, it's an incredible mindset. It's incredibly freeing because it's, this is what I call existential emancipation, Existential emancipation is when you're liberated from maybe not all, but most of your existential fears because you accept it and you embrace them. So understand your fears to understand who you are. Hmm. Uh, is that another mic drop moment, Yancey? I, <laughs> as a cancer survivor, I know exactly what you're talking about. Oh, wow, yeah. I, <laughs> I, I remember thinking... Dude, what you just said hit me because I remember thinking the only reason I don't, the only reason I'm not okay with leaving is because of my wife and my kiddos, but just me and my existence, I, I found total peace and tranquility with, man, this may be, I may not have much more time left. And I would get almost giddy that I was, I was okay with that. You know, of course, except for the wife and the kids, but that is, I think it takes time to get there and it, it's a journey, but I was there. And I, I know exactly what you're talking about, man. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah, yeah, you've been there, you felt it, you know, it's, uh, dude, it's, 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 I, I think a lot of, I think a lot of lack of motivation and despair, depression, or whatever you want to call it, I think comes a lot from that, you know, I think if you look at clinical depression exists, you know, 100%, you know, it's, it's all in the brain. It's all chemicals, you know, like your, your balance is off, your mind is going to be off and you, you know, that could lead to horrible things like wanting to off yourself, you know, but then uh, again, in that book, Men's Search for Meaning, you know, it's, it's uh, Victor Frankl talks about um, auto bibliotherapy. So pretty much doing self therapy through reading and developing your mind. But what, what does that mean in the end? It's learning to know yourself and having that introspection. And people just compartmentalize too much. They ignore their, 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 their negative emotions. They call it, there's no negative emotions. Emotions either feel good or they feel bad. It's just, they, it doesn't mean that they're good or bad. They just either feel good or feel bad. They just are. Feel it all. Be a whole human. Link your emotions with your mind and your rational. This is how you're going to become a full individual and you're going to live a constructive, a constructive life. And, and I think this is, this is it, man. This is the road to fulfillment but you have to understand yourself first. If you don't have any introspection, how are you going to live a life of transcendence? You're going to stagnate, man. You're going to be just, you know, wiggling around in, in mud and, and shit like a little fat pig, not knowing where it's going to go, you know? Don't be a fat pig just wallowing in you and crap. Become a mountain lion. Be agile and adaptable. Be aware of what's happening, you know? This is, this is the way I see it. You know, some people might think that I'm, 
not humble and very arrogant for saying this, but that's truly what I think. You know, I, I don't think I'm an elitist either, but I despise posers. If you're a poser, no, you're just a pig wallowing in shit trying to be a mountain lion. Just be that mountain lion. I like it, man. Listen, I so- hope that wasn't too much cursing. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know what? You don't have to jump off mountains for that to apply to you. you, you yeah, absolutely. You don't have to jump off a mountain. You know, that's actually do not jump off a mountain. This is probably one of the dumbest things you can do. Do not do what I do. But you know what? It could be exploring an art, picking up a brush and starting painting something that nobody has ever painted before. It could be a sculpture. It could be developing a new um, education program for kids that, you know, need it. whatever it is. You know, I'm not saying that what I'm doing is altruistic. It is very uh, egocentric and, you know, maybe selfish, but then is egocentric and selfish a bad thing? Maybe not because who else is going to live your life in, you know, for, nobody else is going to live your life for yourself. If you live a constructive, fulfilling life, but then the next step is to share that with others to hopefully trigger that desire to make it happen themselves or hopefully even empower themselves you know to do that which is what i'm trying to do with my son you know and it's it's i'm trying to share with him what i've learned that really made me fulfilled in my existence and be okay with that if i die you know and this is man that 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 the existential emancipation through transcendence is really what i wish people could experience you know if more people have experienced that, they would spend less time trying to hurt others. Hey, last, last question I have. Matthias, <laughs> Super Frenchie, the movie. Ah. What, what, what can you share about the movie with us? The movie, so the movie uh, is done. Uh, it's been, uh, we worked on it for 11 years uh, because simply because we couldn't force the story to come full circle. You know, and eventually uh, we documented it all. And Chase Ogden, who uh, teaches film at uh, uh, in Spokane, Washington, the film university over there, I think it's, uh, I forget the name of the university where he's teaching. But anyway, he went to Chapman University, got his uh, uh, master's in, in, you know, he's a documentarian. You know, he makes movies and he made the Super Frenchie movie. And the Super Frenchie movie has been a successful um over a one year long fest- film festival run all over the world. And now it's being distributed by Greenwich Entertainment who distributed the movie Free Solo and is produced by uh, Roped in Production who produced the movie Dirtbag, uh, the big climbing movie and K2 Sirens of the Himalayas. So we got a really good team on it and now it's available to watch March 26th. And it's not, a, it's not a ski porn movie, you know? It's not just about skiing and jumping. You know, yeah, it's about skiing and jumping, but it's the way I chose my life. And it's, 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 it's a movie about life. It's a movie about living more than just a sport, you know? And so I, I, uh, I hope, uh, yeah, people will get a chance to, to watch it and I hope they'll be able to, to connect with it. So anyway, this is, my whole life is put out there and uh, it is what it is. Hopefully I'll be well received. <laughs> Uh, and, you know, <laughs> letting JC and I watch it early. We we've seen it, and it is edge of your seat excitement. <laughs> for ways that listeners and viewers that that are, that are tuning in right now, for reasons that you might not be thinking of, uh, they go way beyond jumping off the edge of a cliff. And I know we love watching that kind of stuff, and that's what gets ten million views on videos. But it goes way, way beyond that, and. Um, it's good stuff, and every, I hope everybody will will, will tune in and, and, and check it out. So thank you for giving us the early inside look, my friend. Oh, yeah. I appreciate it. No, I hope I'm glad it resonated with you. So thank you. <laughs> I'll I'll add to that. You know, knowing you for this time, Matthias, and, and watching that. Admittedly, I'll just admit it. Not not very manly of me, but but I, I definitely teared up during a, a few of the scenes because of knowing that the person you are on the inside, not just the the amazing and unbelievable things you do on the outside um it, w- it was a great great movie to watch and i and and I, i'm gonna encourage everybody and in the meantime until march 26 you said it was march 26 is when march 26 available. i'm gonna I, you know probably after this podcast you, you'll have 20 million views of of the youtube uh video of the avalanche the gopro avalanche video of matthias <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, so we, I want to encourage people to get on YouTube, look at the Matthias Giro avalanche, and it <laughs> is still the craziest ski two and a half minutes I've ever seen in my life. And uh, man, I, I, I still watch it from start to finish. So I want to encourage people to check it out. Uh, it was one of those days, man, when I landed, uh, uh, I, I looked at my, you know, partner, Stefan, and, and I told him, I was like, man, we're never going to see this ever again in our life. Yeah. This is a moment we're going to remember on our deathbed. And uh, it was really, uh, it was the magic of the moments, you know, and we just happened to capture it on camera. <laughs> it, it, is, it is the most amazing scene I've ever seen in my life. So um, I just, I just love, I love showing it off, man. <laughs> Thanks, bro. I, I know I have something to do with the, the 10 million views. <laughs> You're just clicking over and over again. <laughs> I love what you said there with the deathbed. It's it's so true. I mean, our, I I tell my clients all the time when you when you're sitting there in that moment and you only got maybe a little more time left, are you gonna look back and say, "Man, I really enjoyed the ride. That that was a wonderful journey." And uh, we we have no doubt that what what your answer would be um, to yourself. I I I love. Uh, we always carry nug. I always carry nuggets with me for I, when, when we finish the podcast and fulfillment will always be on a much higher platform than happiness for the yeah. rest of my life. Uh, they just don't have the same meaning. And uh, I, I, I love your very clear definition of that. And I will take that with me for the rest of my life. And oh, I will be a little better, a little better version of myself <laughs> to fulfill each and every day, my friend. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. You got it. Thank you. <laughs> I, feel, I feel a Yancey Culp Instagram post coming up here real soon. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. This is one of those, man, we, we, it went way long, and it, but it's still, you, this is that one moment, you know, you sit down and you watch something like a good Joe Rogan podcast and it goes three or four hours. This is one of those where I would have no problem going for three to four hours, my friend. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I'm having a great time with you guys. It's great. You know, it's, it's, it's great to be able to, uh, to connect with people that have um, this constructive, you know, approach and also have been on the verge of losing it all. Like you have, you know, like being recovering from, from cancer or, or, you know, whatever, death sentence that is given to you and 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 going beyond that but that there's so much meaning to find into it i mean i think i think so many people are, are, are um not afraid i think they even have more of, of a mental block of introspection dig deep see what's inside and once you start that you're getting a little quizzy and uncomfortable that's when you need to dig even deeper that's when you're going to find that, that, that tranquility, you know, but that drive, that incessant hunger. Don't kill the hunger. Don't overeat. The hunger needs to be there always. <laughs> hey, hey, you know what? When you say this too, man, and, and this is just off the cuff, but I think about like that, that first climb, right? I remember the first climb, I was scared. I was nervous. And, and then it was like, okay, overcame that one. Then it was like this progression. Well, what I, what I did the first time wasn't that scary. You know, it's not very scary anymore. And I, I think the, the challenge for most people is overcoming just that first phase of fear. Man, if you, if you, can, if you can get up and over that, then you have a chance to like maximize your potential beyond. And what was scary is no longer scary. You know, well, it's, well, yeah, I, th I think it's also reframing it. I think it needs to be understood that fear is just part of the process. That's all it is. It's not a bad omen. It's not telling you, oh, you shouldn't do this. It's telling you, pay attention to make it happen. This is all fear is telling you. Fear is only telling you to pay attention. It means that your, 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 your privated mindset of survival and it's kicking in. It's, it's, it's the transition from being comfortable to being an acute and thorough and precise survival machine. That's what fear is telling you. It's just part of the process. It's not, it's not that it's bad to feel fear. Fear just is. 
just 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 welcome it with open arms because it's gonna it's gonna shape you in who you actually need to be to be able to get what you're trying to do uh achieved and reached mm. that's all it is man fear is just part of the process that's all it is you know it's like base jumping you know when guys are like oh i'm doing it for the rush it's like well sorry man you're probably gonna die and that sucks that is such a shallow way to jump you know it's like what is the bigger meaning but like you know adrenaline is part of it yeah it, sometimes it feels good sometimes it feels bad but most of the time i kind of resent adrenaline i don't want anything to do with it you know but it's just part of the process. So you just welcome it and just do it. You know, fear is just the same thing. It's just part of the process. We got to stop to, we got to stop ostracizing our feelings and things like that. You know, if you want to be a full human being, you got to embrace it all. Mm-hmm. If you feel it all, you, you are actually, you actually a functioning human being. If you're not feeling it all, well, sorry, you're already kind of dead. Yeah. Hey, this shit was supposed to be B-roll, and and <laughs> this is good. Let's do some editing here. We will got we have the greatest keynote that we could ever put together, man. I'm from you, Super Frenchy. There ended up being, I think we got seven or eight mic drops. Now, you you think- briefly mentioned it was you, you said it. This took one second, about halfway through the podcast. You said there would be less hate in the world. Do you remember when you brought that up? It was maybe the yeah. third or fourth mic drop? Yeah, I think, I think if, if people were, if more people were fulfilled, they would spend less time trying to hurt each other. Okay. <clears throat> That's it. And that includes hate, that includes everything. You know what I mean? It's like, and I'm not afraid of confrontation. Sometimes confrontation is necessary. It's just the way it is. You know, there's a pimple, you got to pop it. You know what I mean? If there's an issue, you got to talk about it. You know, like if your friend does something that you disapprove of, call them out. But then they also have to call you out when you do something that's that's not cool, you know. And and the bottom line is if you are fulfilled, you're gonna be less worried about what other people are doing and 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 trying to reflect whether they're doing it right or doing it wrong, you know? And like who are you to judge? Are they hurting others? If they're not, then who are you to judge? You know, it's, it's, if you reach fulfillment, you also reach a place of understanding through acceptance of your own self. Um, you're you're, you're going to need to get into another profession after it's. <laughs> uh, what, what do you, what, <laughs> well, no, I'm curious, man. There, there's some great lessons that you've learned in the mountains, but also you know, the thing I brag about you, man, is, is like, we've talked about language, we've talked about philosophy, we've talked about so many things, we've talked about music and all these, these things. And it's, it's not just hucking off the mountain. It's, it's the lessons learned on the mountain. But it's also, man, it's the continuous learning that you do for yourself when you're on safe ground as well. You know, and, and there's not, you know, and you know this in, in this world of ex- extreme sports and, and I'm, I know Yancey sees it on the Spartan side. It can be very selfish. It can be egotistical and it can be just about that one damn thing. Like if you just were a skier and a base jumper, I, I don't know if, if I'm that stoked to just hang around you, you know, but it goes but it goes beyond it, man. It goes like what you're talking about. It's, it's the whole thing. It's part of the process. Oh, well, thank you. I, I, I really appreciate that you, yeah, you, you connecting with it and you're experiencing this way. And it's, it's, you know, I think um, early on, you know, when I did my first ski base jump, uh, you know, I was just a ski base jumped off my hood and it just happened to had never been done before. And I had a couple of friends film it and I had a head cam and then, our buddy has said, you know, called the local news. And I thing I know, like ABC News is there and interviewing and all that. And I'm like, oh, cool, whatever. And I go to bed. And the next day, my phone is blowing up, you know, and I'm getting calls from Good Morning America and CNN. And I'm like, oh, my God, you know, this is crazy. But this is right away. And then I was fed to the lines, you know, like right away, boom, nobody briefed me. And boom, I'm on, the, I'm on the live TV set sharing the experience. And then that's when I just realized that jumping is only a third of it, you know. Because, you know, as a pro athlete, another third is capturing it well and, you know, creating the content and all this stuff. But then the biggest part is to communicate about it 
and to share the experience. I'm aware that most people out there don't want to jump off a cliff, or have zero desire, and they will never do it. And I'm not saying that they should at all. You know, pick a painting, a sculpture, or playing the guitar, whatever you want to do, that's cool. But in the end, what really matters is to be able to, I think, share the experience constructively, which is what I'm trying to actively work at. And when you do something long enough, you can really break it down and understand it better because you, you, you're less overwhelmed by it and you reach more of a state of at least uh, omnipresence almost. You feel kind of like so connected and in touch. And if you can share that, that, that digestion, that connectivity, with 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 others, I I, I think it's it's I, I truly think it's the it's a way to give back and to turn a, a selfish pursuit into uh, into some form of altruism, in a way. You know, we're not not wanting to be arrogant about this. You know, I'm not trying to blow this out of proportion and saying that I should be like a you know a, a scholar or a phd guy whatever but i'm just trying to do what i can to share constructively to hopefully you know give a high five to some people out there you know so they can create their own journey of fulfillment <laughs> yeah, i think connecting that and really tying that up and putting a bow on it for the listeners and you can correct me where i might go wrong here but i what i related to right there if you're a doctor if you're an educator if you're a ceo um, whatever your profession is, if you're a lawyer, if you're a ski base jumper, uh, if you're a professional athlete, an actor, musician, politician, a lot of times certain things have a little higher platforms than others, but it's so much more than just jumping off the mountain or, or doing the surgery or whatever, or being the lawyer. It's about wrapping that up and making yourself truly fulfilled, but being the best version of yourself to the masses out there is you got to get that one third right that you're talking about that's so important. You know, you, you, having the great content and jumping off the mountain is, is great, but being that awesome version of yourself and the, your presentation, how you sell yourself to the masses, and as a doctor, it's a bedside manner, whatever, that's the, that's the ones that make it to the top of their profession. Yeah, absolutely. It's it's I'm learning. With, go ahead, go ahead. No, it's learning. I was talking about that with a friend who's a doctor recently, actually. And it's 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 what makes the difference between a good doctor and a great doctor is the doctor who can not just focus on his craft, but actually read between the lines and understand how to communicate with his patients. And also understanding, okay, is this guy downplaying his pain? Is this guy overly dramatic? Is this guy too neutral? It's understanding their codes of communication and where they stand and their understanding of their own body to be able to walk them through the process of, of recovering, of feeling better. That's what a great doctor is. You know? And I think you can apply that to anything. Any, because any profession almost out there you know, is means you have to interact with others you know and 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 if you don't my gopro just turned off <laughs> but if you if if you if you don't learn to yeah to evolve from or try to evolve from good to 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 better or, or great then you will you will plateau you will stagnate you know and that's and i think that's what yeah makes a great doctor is the bedside manners you know and and i think that's that's something that can uh be applied to almost any profession i think <laughs> i mean the, the the greeks invented it all i i didn't invent anything the greeks you know they broke it all down ethos pathos logos ethos what is the meaning pathos the passion you know the emotions behind it you know do things live a life of emotion and logos the logic the 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 the, the, the key takeaways from that it's ethos pathos logos man you know we didn't invent anything. We owe it all to the you know great Greek philosophers. <laughs> and now you just gave the mic drop to our CEO, Martin <laughs> Joe Desena. <laughs> love that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think I think Matthias should take uh, Joe for for a little ski. <laughs> oh, I am totally down. I'm totally down. But I'm afraid he's going to bring his kettlebell, you know, because he brings that kettlebell everywhere. I don't know how to ski with the kettlebell. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, actually, uh, last night. I, I sent him uh, the link to your uh, to the GoPro video, the Avalanche video. I said, uh, watch this and, and share it with your kids. They're going to love it. 
<laughs> I hope it's not going to give these kids bad ideas, but <laughs> it might. He's going to throw. He's going to throw his forty-pound kettlebell in my head. You know, that's not going to feel good. <laughs> well, hey, man, thank you so much. Um, I, I think we've got. I think we have some really good material here. Today's episode of Spartan Up is brought to you by BetterHelp. Spartan Up listeners can save ten percent on their first month by going to BetterHelp.com. Slash Spartan. Thanks for listening to this episode of the DECA series on Spartan Up Podcast. Spartan Up is your partner in resilience for mind, body, and spirit. We're here three days every week. Tuesdays, you can find Joe DeSena, founder and CEO of Spartan, interviewing biohackers, business leaders, authors, and athletes. Thursdays and Saturdays, catch episodes from our DECA, Endurance, Trail, Combat, and La Ruta series. Do you know someone who needs a little nudge? Maybe they could use some motivation, tactics to be stronger, healthier, happier, more successful. Tell them about our show. And if you're watching on YouTube, leave us a comment. We want to know who's watching and who's listening. Thanks. See you next time.